Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to it. It's Mom's Chat Wednesday. Um, I haven't chatted in a while, though, actually. So welcome to it. Today our topic is about tattoos as well as the perception. But before I get started, let me just say, this topic is, there's a lot that needs to be covered, number one. And number two, I think it's a rather sensitive topic. So I'm not going to bombard people with like a whole long video on this. So I'm, I'm going to kind of break it up into parts. So just depending on how we go, we're either going to have two parts. So part one this week and part two next week, or we'll do part one, two and three. But we'll see how it goes. So this particular topic is, I guess, near and dear to my heart because of all my, my ink and also, I guess, the perception and the judgment that has been thrown my way. I've been toying with this idea for the last couple of weeks and I think on Saturday and Sunday I got my confirmation that uh, this needs to be done. So on Saturday I had a friend of mine over for our just like a catch-up session and she said to me that at our church's fun day on the 24th of September her 19 year old son was there now I hadn't met I haven't met him, I haven't seen him, but she says that he was so taken by my art, you know, my tattoos. He was really taken by it. And he was so surprised that his mother has a friend that has so many tattoos. Because my dear friend is not a lover of ink. Um she loves me and I love her to death, but she's just not a lover of, of the art. So he was very surprised that, that her and I are friends. And she said, because the reason why he's so taken by my tattoos is because he wants to sleep. And she said to him that, you know, I, I only got my first tattoo when I was 31. So it's not like I just woke up one morning and decided, hey, I want to sleep. No, there was a whole process that went into it. And I'm happy I got my tattoos after 31 because anyone that's over 30 will tell you it's probably the most liberating age of one's life. You know, and it's just so, and I say liberating because you, you kind of figure out who you are, what you want, what you like, what you don't like. Um, you, you kind of figure out your strengths and you just, you just know who you are and it, it, it's amazing. So for me at 31, my first tattoo was my kid's initials and I was happy with that for about two years. And then I decided that the journey is going to kind of continue. Now, I just need to point out that my tattoos symbolize something for me, for a point where I was in my life at some point. So it's a reminder of where I come from and it kind of keeps me grounded, so to speak. So some people have a journal where they would write in, you know, what happens to them or their stories. I have my body. So my tattoos is my story and my body is my journal. That's how I look at it. And I love every piece of art that is on me. I don't regret not one of it. But the perception out in the world is that people with tattoos are evil. And I say that because a couple of weeks ago, months ago, I was fetching my kids from school and there was this little girl hopping and jumping around. And at the time I had purple singles in and she said to her mom, look at that lady, she's got... Uh, purple singles and tattoos her mother turned around and said to her that people with purple hair and tattoos are evil um, for me that's a perception what I did is I went to the little girl and I said to her that people with purple hair and tattoos are the coolest people ever and you know when I looked at her face her whole world just kind of lit up and for me, if I could change the perception of that little person for just a minute, I was happy. You know, one gets judged a lot. People don't have to say much, but the judgment is there, you know, whether it's in a mall or in a shopping center or even a church, you know. So I do get the side eye. I do get a comment here and there about, about my tattoos. And for me in the 21st century, surely the, the perception should be changed. Because for anyone that knows me, the last thing I am is evil. You know, Candace said to me on Saturday that I have such a heart for people. And people are so drawn to me without me having to say much or even open up my mouth. 
you know, and the power that lies within me is so much greater than what I actually realize because I don't really go out into the world and kind of look and see, you know, who's taken by me or not. You know, for me, I just do what I need to do and I go on. And she said to me that people in church need to see a Simone. People need to see someone that they can relate to. Um, for me, the people I relate to um, are people that that kind of share something that I've either experienced or something that I have at this point in my life. You know, so I interact with people and befriend people that relates to me. And she says a lot of people will be able to relate to me because of not just my story, but because of, of my artwork. And I think in part two, what I'll do is I'll, I'll move over to the church factor or the church part of, of, of having tattoos and how I kind of, I manage that or how I handle it, so to speak. Um, so we'll get more into that. We'll get more into what my tattoos mean and an end as we go on. But let me just close this session by saying, guys, can our perception start to change? If you don't know my story or my journey, don't judge what you see on the outside. There's a reason why, you know, you see what you see. But if you ask to have a conversation with me about it, I will gladly share my story and conversate with you because it's who I am. I own my story. I own who I am, love who I am, love all the 13 or 14 tattoos that I have. Um, I'm confident and I'm not ashamed to be a mother of four that has tattoos, you know. Um, yeah, so for those people out there that do maybe have tattoos and, you know, that kind of feel embarrassed, ashamed or feel judged, just own it. It's who you are. You cannot change people's perception and you cannot live your life pleasing people or keeping people happy. You just have to do you and be the best version of you that you can possibly be. And I think that's it for part one on tattoos and perception. Guys, please stay tuned for next week's um, chat as we get into it more on a, on a spiritual, on a spiritual um, level. And I'll share a few experiences that I've had or encounters I've had in church with regards to my tattoos. So God bless guys, have a lovely day and yeah, stay tuned, 11 years of nappies.